This is Paul from Market Square Heroes. Welcome to Legends of Rock 2019. We couldn't leave without speaking to promoters Eddie and Mario. Thanks very much for joining us, guys. Pleasure, Paul. Thank you. Obvious question, how did this all begin? All 2005, um, we weren't in the music business at all. This is me and my wife. Um, we met Mario later. And we're a big uh, Pink Floyd fans, so we took a Pink Floyd tribute, Pink Floyd, to the Island of Rhodes because uh, David Gilmore's got a house there and Pink Floyd spent quite a lot of time there in the uh, 70s. And uh, okay, we took it there and um, I always remember we sold 164 tickets, holiday makers from the UK, and we lost about £10,000. <laughs> I thought, oh, this is a good game. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't do it in 2006. And then gradually we were getting more and more people uh, contacting, are you going to do it again? So we did it again in 2007 and we got about 300 people and we broke even. And then we decided we can't continue with just one band. So in 2008, I think we had about five tributes. Like, I think it was Let's Let, that sort of thing. Um, I think it was a um, Thin Lizzy band and it gradually grew from there until 2013 we were up to about i think we took about a thousand people out there in 2013 and uh, the village had a new mayor who was um, the local mafia and decided he'd um, like to blackmail us for three thousand euros so <laughs> with a thousand people out there we had no choice but to pay him so we paid him did the event which was quite successful 2013 good one, yeah, it's a great one and uh, by the way, Ma Mario came along firstly as uh, just a customer, and then we realised he was a uh, musician, a fantastic bass player and singer, and he gradually become a performer with all our events. So anyway, after 2013, um, after being blackmailed, we said bye bye and went to Spain for two or three years. But my wife and I, Lane, we were trying to ease our way out of that situation because it was a lot of hard work and just concentrate on this one here in Great Yarmouth and um, Mario took it over from us and took it to Cyprus and it's been a huge success in 2017 that was Mario's first event and uh, then 2018 last year and now we're looking forward to this year in October so that's how it started um, the business we we're in and then in 2012 we decided we'd like to do a UK event and so looked around at different holiday parks and uh, ended up at Vauxhall and uh, this is our Eighth Legends of Rock in Great Yarmouth, and it always sells out every year. So uh, we've got a lovely bunch of people; they're like family, and we love it. Is it a collaboration for the music for the artists that are on between the two of you? No, not at all. We're totally separate entities. Okay. Our company is called Classic Rock Tours yep. Limited, and uh, Mario is Iron Stallion. Um, when Mario took this over, he came for meetings at our office, and we ran him through things, and we went to Cyprus. Actually, we went to Spain together first, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah. and we couldn't yeah. find a decent contact there. Yeah. And then uh, we went over to Cyprus, and I think the first day we had a, found a decent contact. I mean, the radio station. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you know we thought, yeah, we found a great some great venues, didn't we? Absolutely. On the beach. Oh, look at this, fabulous! Yeah. And I'm thinking, right, we're getting somewhere here. And now I'm going to have to spend a couple of months sort of trying to impart all of my previous experience on the Mario, but after one day, I'm I'm serious, after one day, he got it. And I was able to back out. And I have no <laughs> input at all, it's 100% Mario's event. Uh, we go along as, as uh, guests, as music fans, and it, he's done us proud. And, um, Thanks, mate. It, it, he's done a fabulous job. I can't praise it highly enough. Oh, brilliant. The, the tribute scene has changed over the last few years. We've gone from the basic tributes in the pubs to the theatres to the, uh, the, the what I would call the third tier, where the people turn around and um, sort of go into immaculate detail. Mm. Those top, top tributes you're getting, it's, it's like they want to be here. This is this is the, the, the focal point. Legends of Rock, Cypress Rock. Yeah. Um, would you agree that what you're getting are the top level? Well, yeah, we, we, there are probably a hardcore, what, 10 tribute bands in the country that are, um, without giving away any details, they're yeah. very good living. 
Okay. Most of the other tributes have jobs and they're sort of doing it part time and, and earning, you know, they're doing okay, but there are certain ones, I'm not going to name any names, no, no, no. you know who yeah. they are, yeah. who, are, who are doing it as, as a living. Yeah. And um, of course, once you start doing that and depend on your income, uh, depend on the music for your income, then obviously it's a natural progression for the standard to go up and up and up. And those top tributes now are just phenomenal. So how do you go about putting your list together to do the tribute? Right? What, you, you do booking the band? Yeah, it's just a tribute come to you. Well, you out of the 50 bands we put on at the Legends of Rock, um, I'm, I'm just pulling a number out there. There's probably 20 to 25 that are just shoo-ins. You have to bring them. Okay. You know? A, either they're the top of the tribute game, or B, like Mario, they become part of this extended family of rock fans, and we bring those bands back every year. Yeah. Uh, so it probably leaves us out of the 50, 25 slots to fill. We get recommendations in from uh, customers, so I saw a great band here, great band there. We go to gigs and we see bands occasionally, and, um, and obviously we get inundated with emails from bands who want to appear at the event. And uh, I mean, I could put a hundred bands on here. Yeah. I've got yeah. that many, but um, obviously we're restricted in terms of the scheduling timetable. It's 2019, next year, March, you do this again. Mm -hmm. Do you go home on Tuesday and say, right, who am I going to have? Or have you already, oh, I've already, all about it? I've already probably got, apart from that core of 20 to 25 bands, I've probably already got 10 more on the list. I'm probably up to 35 bands for 2020 already. Yeah, not confirmed, but in my on my word yeah, book, yeah, they're yeah. there. So, and once we've got that core sort of on on my uh, schedule, then over the next few months we'll have one here, two there, four there, and gradually we'll get up to. I normally try to leave three or four slots free up until the last three or four months, just to see what comes in, and uh, then then we put it in, and and then always every year about three days for the event. A band drops out or two, right, or as this year, three band drops out. <laughs> but we can always uh, fill the slots because people are itching to play the, the event. So. What about you, Mary? Do you bring your list and say, oh, that was good, I'll keep them? No, they weren't going to cross them off. It's slightly different with Cypher Shots because there's, you know, there's a smaller, you know, maybe you have like 50 bands here, you know, um, yeah. the Cypress, I'm looking at sort of 12, 14 tributes. Okay. So, um, you know, it's hard to drop anyone at any point, mm. and they're never ever dropped it's just that rotation really just making sure yeah. that that you keep the, there's always that kind of core yeah. there but that, that you've got other acts you're always going to have other acts lined up or in the back of your mind um for like the next event and i, I think for this year i've like rotated quite heavily this year okay. but it's it's just been about what is classic rock what are, what are the other big names that I haven't been represented yet? So in a way that like this year's wish list kind of wrote itself mm. before I got to having to, to contact anyone. Mm. And then, like Eddie said, you know, you're always getting bands throughout the year expressing their interest that want want to be involved. You know, they're often part of the family for mm. decades. You know, and so it, it's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. The hardest thing is. Is leaving people behind, you know. Yeah, really, it, you know, it's really. Uh, <laughs> um, I yeah. mean, yeah, I like the word rotation yeah. rather than drop. No, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I have some bands, uh, as I said, that we put on every year. Yeah. Um, you know, they'd kill me if I didn't put them on. Uh, but there are others that I rotate every other year. Like this year, we've got a uh, Beaver Santana back. I'm a massive Santana fan. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, throughout the crowd that we have here, they're, you know, probably only 30-40% are Santana fans. So I put them on every other year. They weren't on last year, they'll be on this year, they won't be on. And there's probably maybe eight or ten bands that fall into that category. So every other year we bring them back. I like the fact you bring in some original music as well. Oh yeah, we, we, um, you see, because as Mario said, because we put 50 bands on, we have that ability to do that yeah yeah mario doesn't because he's restricted to 14 15 bands yeah. because he has to fly them out the so cypress put him in hotels yeah. well that's very the expensive. other thing the other thing i think with cypress is it's not just the uk market there's yeah. the cypriot market and so i want my merchant my marketing to be instantly recognizable to it if you're 
a Cypriot rock fan, you can look at that flyer and know exactly what all those bone yeah. bands, yeah. you know, yeah. represent. Yeah. Like, um, what I do try and do every year, and I have done, is used local, brought some of the local acts in that might play some original stuff. Um, so, uh, I always make room for two local bands, right? To, who will appear at the event. Um, but yeah, in in general, the sort of the main events are all tributes, um, and you know from when you look at look at the marketing exactly what you're seeing and it makes it easier to sell it you know um certainly to the locals i mean that was, i mean mario's identified the problem we always had when we did it abroad in in roads and then afterwards in spain that you're aiming at two different markets you, yeah. you've got the uk market and you know that very very well and then you've got the local market and you need to sell tickets to that local market in cyprus or spain or Rose. To make the event viable, and that, that's the tough part about it. And, and what Mario just said is, is obvious. He's booking names that locals would recognise. I mean, if he booked some of the original bands, it would be <coughs> nothing to us. Yeah. 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 I know it's last night when we were down the front for about the fluid effect. Um, everybody knew who you were. Yeah, this is this the amount of people. It's like one big family. Do yeah, you, it's like a family, isn't it? It is, yeah. and, and that's. You know, that's really what I've inherited from Eddie, really, yeah. and become part of myself. Yeah. And these, you know, everyone at this event, they mean so much yeah. to both of us. And, you know, and, and it is, it's, you know, Eddie's brought this community of... Because when like, Mario took over with Cypress, everybody knew him anyway. Yeah. Because you've been going since 20... Uh, 11. 11. Oh, so we've got a seven year history with the family. Yeah. So. so it was not a question of, uh, well, we're backing out of this now. He's a new guy. Everybody knew him. So between us, did you endure the fluid effect? Oh, stunning. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. And you know, the comment that was made to me by Matt Pierce, who you know is in about 17 bands this week. <laughs> a fantastic guitarist, very professional guy. He said, because you may know that we worked for years and years since 2005 with Think Floyd. Yeah. I got massive respect from them. They're fabulous bands. Um, but for one reason or another, you know, we decided to change tack and go with the Floyd effect. Anyway, Matt's comment was, when you watch Think Floyd, it's like listening to a Pink Floyd recording. It's absolutely as the recording. Yeah. Yeah. Watching the Floyd effect tonight was watching Pink Floyd play live. And that's the difference. Some people may prefer the recording version. Others may prefer that sort of live situation. I, I, I thought they were fabulous, and the projections at the back of the stage, obviously, were big addition. Fantastic! So yeah, very, very impressed. Mario, anybody you're looking forward to seeing or being at the front having a? Oh yeah, I've done my job now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm looking forward to. Oh, um, looking forward to Metallica tonight, actually. Metallica. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, Livewire. Uh, always a. Uh, it's great atmosphere. Uh, Bohemians are yet to come. Yeah. Um, so I do any nights this afternoon? Soon? Yeah, <laughs> so but you know, everybody assumes that I'm very knowledgeable out, about rock. I'm not. I've never he heard a Muse track to my knowledge in my life. I've no you idea. You said the same with Muse, though, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, when, when I was, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm of a certain age, and I mean, I. Give you a clue, I was married in 1966, so that was the year of our music, the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And uh, Percy, my wife, and I were pretty much uh, prog rockers. Okay. And we had blinkers on. It, it was like Yes and King Crimson and Genesis and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then, of course, then Led Zeppelin came in, you've got to accept that. But we kept those blinkers on throughout the 70s and 80s, you know, and, and our sort of rock tapes were very restricted until. We started this business, I was 60 years old when we started in 2005 and gradually all these lovely people have educated me to so many other fantastic I was the same, I mean I grew up, my parents were just yeah. Yeah. Really like your music yeah. collection really and I grew up with classic rock is just my roots entirely yeah. and, mm -hmm. and like, certainly a lot of the prog stuff as well but I remember sort of uh, as a teenager I was just so into Queen yeah and queen i just thought you can't get better than queen so yeah. i didn't really it yeah. took a long that's time right. Right. to kind of yeah. break out and like yeah. get into other bands i yeah. thought no one can do 
you can't do it better than that's that, right, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, over time you sort of yeah. Tune I mean, yeah, uh, I tell you, it's absolutely incredible. You know, we don't forget we we were prog rockers, me yeah. and Lane, yeah. and now we're in this business taking bands to road. And we think, well, we better go and see some other bands. Yeah. So we went to see. I had no idea who ACDC was. <laughs> Not a clue, really, seriously. So we went to see Livewire in Brighton. And then Lane's goes, oh, they've all got black T-shirts on. It's really loud, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and then suddenly, you know, <laughs> ding. ding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's in actually quite good. <laughs> and, I mean, our musical taste is so wide now. And that's fantastic. Fantastic. Love it. So, long may continue. Eddie, Mario, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Thanks for all the work you're doing, doing promoting okay, yeah. uh, tributes and stuff. Thanks very much indeed. This has been Paul of Market Square Heroes at Legends of Rock 2019. We'll see you on the road. <laughs>